It's really around, isn't a king flathead a big sand flathead is one of the questions. And what's the difference between a sand flathead, a king flathead and a tiger flathead? Righto. Okay, thanks, Jane. So I'll just see if I can get the technology working. Uh, right, yeah, so this has been, this is a fundamental that we really need to get right from the start, that not all flathead are, are the same. Um, they're quite a large family of, of species. So their genus is called platycephalus. Um, so like we're humans are homo sapiens, um, flathead of platycephalus something. So there is a whole range of different flathead um, in the family. This figure here is, it's called a phylogenetic um, plot and it shows uh, the relationship between those different flathead. So you can see here, you know, the red lines showing warm climates. So China, Borneo, Hong Kong, so they're all through there. And we come down the list into the blue and we come into some of the species that we have around uh, our backyard and also on mainland uh, Australia. So our two main species that we have in um, Tasmania are sand flathead, so Platycephalus persensis and Platycephalus richardsoni, which is the tiger flathead. Um, so an interesting thing here is while they look reasonably similar, the other thing that these plots allow you to do is look back in time at how far, um, how long ago that they diverged as, as you know, a family. Um, they, this was, it was about 22 million years ago that um, sand flathead and tiger flathead start on, the, on their own evolutionary paths. So you know, while they may look similar, they are very, very different. They're not, you know, if something's happening in one species, um, it's not directly affecting the other species uh, in terms of, you know, they're not co-mating, et cetera. We also have uh, rock flathead, blue spot flathead and toothy flathead in Tasmania as well. So that's just to confuse us that there are a lot of different species here um, and they all have very different characteristics. So James, I don't know, do you want to maybe drop in just a couple of points on what the main morphometric differences are between a couple of those species? Yeah, sure, Sean. Um, starting up at the top, the, the, the blue spot flathead, that's our largest flathead. He gets to about uh, can get up to 900 and um, on the back tail the black spot uh, that's the black smudge on the sand flat it is actually three round dots surrounded by white that's a really distinctive feature um, is in the tail also the actual back end of that tail the body meets a lot more thicker and chunkier in the blue spot flatted than it is in the sand flatted where the sand flatted is more narrow towards that tail end um, the rock flatted, very smooth head, very different. You'll you see the rock flatted, it's very different, very more roundy, uh, not so dorsoventrally ventrally flattened. Um, and then the sand flatted, obviously those brown spots, uh, it's got those sandy type teeth, they're called viliform teeth, so it doesn't have really sharp canines. Um, and so those top three all have those sorts of teeth. The bottom two, the tiger flathead and the toothy flathead, they have sharp canine teeth. Um, and the big difference between these two is one, a little eye flap um, on the toothy and um, white spots along the, the top. Whereas the tiger has really orangey spots and, and the eye lacks that eye flap. That eye flap is used in shallow water to protect the eye from the sun rays. Because the tiger flathead is such a deep water species, it doesn't need that protection from sun. So it actually doesn't have that eye flap. Yep, good one. All right, so the reason that this is um, so important to understand is that we, we do see a lot of confusion between, you know, there's lots of big fat flathead out there, still I don't know what the problem is, and a little bit of confusion between the names, particularly sand flathead and, and bay, uh, sorry, and king flathead. So sand flathead, uh, um, sometimes called bay flathead, they're a smaller species, as James said, the maximum length for female that we've got on records about 590 mil for a male, 506, and so the males grow larger than females. That's pretty consistent across all the flathead species. Uh, females mature about 240 to 260 uh, millimetres total length, um, and males about 210. Peak spawning October to March, sorry, October to March is spawning season, peaks in December, so quite a long spawning season. Um, maximum age recorded is about 23 years in Victoria and about 20 in Taz. 
they tend to live in in shallower water um, and hence why they've sort of got the nickname bay flathead so you're up to about 100 metres, so still on the shelf, but tend to um, be found more in estuaries and inshore. Tiger flathead, on the other hand, are uh, sometimes called king flathead. So I have heard the misperception that king flathead are just mature sand flathead. That's not right. It is a totally different species. And keep in mind that they evolved uh, to be different species 20 million years ago. Um, they are a larger species, so 700 mils, mature about 300 mils, spawning in December to Feb. Um, maximum age is similar to the sand flathead, so 20, 20 years, but found that whilst they're also found inshore, they are generally found out into deeper waters as well. So where this becomes important is when we start talking about the fisheries that are targeting the different species. Um, and just really briefly as well, because um, I think it's useful as we move into some of the other bits and pieces um, as we move forward into the assessments, um, you know, one of the things that we can do, and you know, we've got the frame collection program, and this is where it's really useful to get those samples in. And this is how we do the sort of baseline preliminary assessments for a lot of our species, is we look at the age composition moving through year to year. So, you know, some years there'll be lots of fish that were um, born in that year, other years there might be less. The way we determine that is by aging the fish. So this is the otolus that we get out of the head, with basically the ear bones. And you can see that they have um, rings on them like they have in a tree. Um, we've validated that to show that they're annual growth rings. So they've deposited once a year. And you can see on the right here, then we've got um, you know, the different flathead species that uh, we were talking about before um, and different age profiles uh, for those. So that's a, a quick snapshot introduction, Jane, to the species, but a really important one to get right uh, as we kick off because it has a lot of relevance to where we'll go with the rest of the questions.